My name is Nicole and somewhere in the kitchen is Luke and we're your personal travel managers. Iran touched our travelling hearts and is a country of warm and special people, incredible ancient history and mind-blowing beautiful architecture with detailed mosaic designs. Here is something that we had made in the handicraft which is uh, turquoise in the bitumen. Despite what you might have heard, Iran is very safe and we felt very comfortable and welcome. But the best thing about Iran was the mouth-watering cuisine. Our trip included Tehran, Yazd, Esfahan, Shiraz and Persopolis and we're really looking forward to visiting again. The food on offer in the bazaar and the shops was incredible and we're amazed at the quality of restaurants in Iran. Some of the dishes we tried were pomegranate sour chicken, saffron and butter rice, cherry chicken, soft herb goat's cheese, yogurt, wood-fired flatbread, lamb and herb stew, and also seafood dishes as Iran is close to the Caspian Sea and the Persian Gulf. Persian cuisine is delicious. Our guide Reza and our host Mehdi recognised our love of food and showed us the best handmade chocolates, Persian nougat, which has been perfected over hundreds of years, bread filled with dates, fresh pomegranate juice, Shiraz ice cream, which is served with noodles made of potato starch, and the best baklava we've ever tried. It was filled with apple and cinnamon and rose water. If you're a fan of red wine, no doubt that you've tried Shiraz. This grape and wine originally came from the city of Shiraz in Persia, and the kings and countrymen used to have lovely garden parties drinking Shiraz wine and reading poetry. While alcohol is not currently allowed in Iran, we met a lovely couple at the Good Food and Wine Show here in Australia who make a traditional Persian Shiraz you can get right here. Our host Mehdi also runs a company Shiraz Kitchen Nights that teaches Persian cooking to visit tourists. We had a brilliant cooking class that turned into a surprise party, eating our feast on a beautiful Persian rug. One of the recipes Mehdi taught us was chicken tagine and he's been extraordinarily kind enough to join us all the way from Shiraz to teach us this recipe as well. We'll check in with Mehdi soon, but let's head to Luke first in the kitchen to talk about Persian kebab. Darud, cast in the bashid. That's Persian or Farsi for hello and how are you in a very super formal or polite way. Tonight we're cooking one of the easiest dishes in the world to cook. It takes a few minutes to prepare and it only takes a few minutes to cook as well. There's just a little bit of time to let it sit, rest and marinate in between. Uh, tonight we're going to be cooking kebab i gushti i gav, which basically translates as kebab of meat of a cow. I learned this recipe as kebab i bark, which is kebab of lamb, but Nicole doesn't like lamb and the meat's a little bit tougher, so tonight we're going for this really high quality rump steak that you can see here has been diced nice and large. When you're preparing your rump steak, you do want larger pieces, you want nice soft tender meat so you don't have to hit beat it with a hammer and get it nice and tender. It's already tender. What we're going to do very shortly is marinade and we'll talk about the marinade, but first let's just talk about how to make the perfect Persian kebab. In Australia, typically, we grew up with these tiny little thin skewers, little tubes that you know don't hold the meat, the meat falls off, it doesn't cook properly. Australians, we think we know how to barbecue, but let me tell you, the Persians or the Iranians got it right a long time ago. In Iran, they use skewers like this. Nice, thin, super flat, but nice and wide skewers that allow the meat to rest on and cook through properly. Yes, we did manage to smuggle these back from Iran. We bought these in one of the markets. What we're going to do very shortly is talk to you about how to season the meat and get it all ready to go. So as you can see, we've taken our marinated steak. We have pierced it through the kebab, making these beautiful kebab sticks ready to go on the barbecue. We'll show you how they cook on the barbecue in just a few moments. So our barbecue kebabs, or our uh, beef kebabs, are now on the barbecue cooking. What I've done is set our gas barbecue up to about 200, 220 degrees uh, on a high heat. We're going to cook them for about uh, two to three minutes either side. Ordinarily, with Iranian or Persian kebabs, you'll cook them over charcoal, about five, six minutes over charcoal. Uh, charcoal is amazing, but the Australian 
barbecue is largely gas, and so that's the way we've decided to cook it this evening. So as you can see, we've got a beautiful sear. Our steak, well, our kebab beef is cooking perfectly. These will be ready in about generally six minutes on a gas barbecue at 200, about five to 10 minutes. Just keep an eye on them on charcoal. Uh, we'll be serving them up very shortly. So while the meat was marinating and cooking, we actually organized some rice, uh, just normal steamed or boiled or oven. However you prepare rice is going to be fine. And we've got some flatbread to go with it. To make the rice extra special, a little bit Persian, we're just gonna pour some saffron just into the center, just to give us that nice golden look. Um, and that'll just add a little bit of flavor as we wrap the meat with the rice and the saffron. Just coming across, we're going to now add, and keep in mind one of these skewers is going to equal probably two people. And we're just gonna scrape that bit of the kebab straight across ready to give us one dish of kebab meat with cow. We're doing well. This is Mehdi Value from Shiraz Kitchen Lights. I uh, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to cook one of the first famous Persian cuisines and uh, it's called Tachin. It's one of the famous one and very delicious. Hope you're going to have this food with us in 2021. So, uh, actually, what we're going to do is uh, soak in the rice in hot water and we just leave it for an hour. We just mix it up with spoon of salt, chopped up already one medium sized uh, onion. It's good to have the white onion. We have chicken, two eggs, already brewing saffron in hot water, barley, and yogurt. All right, everyone. So now we're going to we're going to actually fry up onion. Egg in a quick heat. We just put it up here. And we model all these flavors we're going to have. We just put in salt. On. It depends how much you want. And basically, this is very suitable for two people. And what we recommend is black pepper. So how much of each ingredient? It's a, it's a good question. How much each? Uh, it very much depends on how much you're going to serve. And all these flavors is just based on uh, how much you like to do that. It depends on having salty or tonally or a little bit uh, chilly. Make sure that it's well closed. All right. It takes about an hour to cook this. We'll be back. So, go back here. And now we're going to actually put uh, some ingredients together. Okay, first, we need to have two eggs here. And at least five spoon of yogurt. Why the eggs? That's a really good question. Why do you add eggs to this one? Uh, when we want to gather all the ingredients when we're making a cake, so nothing more better than eggs. We're going to mix them all together, and it has to be crazy. If you need more, you're going to add more. So now what can we do? We're just adding some of the batteries that we soaked up already, which is sauce. Start mixing them again. Later on, we add some saffron. It's purely done. Let's do it. Make the color as yellowish as possible. We already had salt in the rice. So, wait for seconds. Cooked. We just shake it up in this pot and we just bring out this chicken. It's finely cooked. 
and then you just give it actually like a few minutes to get a little bit cooler and we start shredding this. Now we start shredding the chicken and put them all into the sauce. So the better result will come out when they're all shredding in small pieces. So shredding the chicken is now finished, and now we are mixing them all together to be an all part of this piece. It's time to add the rest of it. And make sure you just put them all together. We wait for about eight to ten minutes. Put them all the rice. It's better to shut the rice because it's not the final part of the cooking. I just put the oil right at the bottom of the pot because it has to be well cooked under. And we just send it all over. Turn the heat on. As much as possible. And high. And we start putting a layer of rice right at the bottom. And just mix it up every bit. And the same layer. And one layer of mix. And try to put it everywhere in this. Okay, so I did the tachin, the layer of rice. And it's going to be cooked. Uh, almost an hour. So now we just put down the heat. How long do we leave it in the pot? Thank you for asking this question. Can we do that after, right after it is cooked or we just turn the heat off? The answer is no, because uh, we leave it for 20 minutes and the rice has to come out of the pot and when it's getting cooler. Then we just, it is just frying all of these barberries to make a round shape for dressing. One, two, three. Oh, that, that. We're gonna see what we made of. All right. Look at that. Oh, yeah. 